This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, going to try some shallow bay fluking. Pick the nice, nasty-looking day. It's going to get wet. It's going to rain. Hopefully, it's not going to uh, thunder and lightning. But you know what? If you, don't, if you pick a really beautiful day, there's so much boat traffic, it's just ridiculous especially in a kayak so uh, yeah this is my kind of day for doing this uh, we'll see uh, fishing hasn't been great but see what I can do oh be careful what you wish for yes it turned nasty but you know what I was able to fight this off and have a good trip stay tuned Hey, it starts off beautiful. So this is a bay. Um, I've got the mainland to my left. I've got a barrier island to the right. I've got incoming current, so the water is coming at me. Right now, I have no one fishing anywhere near me. There's a party boat about a mile uh, in the direction that I'm facing right now, and all of the boats are hanging around him, so I'm the only boat in this area. I'm in about 10 feet of water bouncing, a three-quarter ounce bucktail, and uh, I've got these newer... Um, three inch, I think the color is called sangria gulp shrimp um, on the top hook, and uh, gotta get into fish pretty quickly. There we go. I just started. I don't know. Gonna let him go. Okay, the length limit is 19 inches. Yeah, if I flatten that guy out, uh, basically uh, the whole handle there is just a little over 19 inches. And with the limit being 19 inches, uh, I can use that as a measuring stick. It was like a borderline, but yeah, I'm just starting. So uh, I'm expecting, you know, I'm gonna be out here a few hours and I should be able to get some better ones. So this is beautiful at the moment. I've got a one mile an hour drift, which is just ideal. And I'm not using the trolling motor, I'm just free drifting. And with almost no wind, uh, you really can't script it any better than this. All right, that one's just short, but yeah, they're big shorts, so this is encouraging uh, right off the bat to have some action. And my plan here is to fish the last 90 minutes or so of incoming current, then through the slack, and then uh, around the first 90 minutes or so of outgoing. Typically, I do better on that outgoing, but uh, yeah, incoming can be good as well. So yeah, this is all looking great. All right, and all the forecasts show a top wind of about 10 miles an hour. Um, despite how bad that sky looks, there are no thunderstorms in the forecast. Um, so, yeah, this is all looking good. There's no shortage of fluke here. Ooh, got a little runner here. All right, so you notice these colors I'm using. Uh, the fish in the bay at this point are feeding on crabs. Crabs, and actually I'm seeing them spit up um, really small flounder, like uh, an inch or two inches. No sand eels, um, you know, no bait fish like that. When they're like that, I always go with that gulp shrimp on the top. And then for a bucktail, um, yeah, it's like a sea robin color, an orange. It, um, you know, this tends to work well for me. Yeah, a little bit of a breeze just starting to come up, but the bigger thing I have to deal with is boat waves. All right, this kayak is awesome in many ways, but 
uh, when you go into waves, uh, yeah, it's wet. And uh, boy, I did a stupid thing there. I, well, I didn't have the cover on my gulp jar, and I'm always recharging. I'm taking that rig in between drifts. I'm sticking it back in that gulp jar. And um, so that wave came right in, so now that thing is half full of salt water. Luckily, I have a second jar that has a cover on it, so I'm just going to work off of that one. When I get home, I'm going to pull all those green grubs out of that jar that's got the salt water and stick them in the other one, top it off with some juice. Um, yeah, well, live and learn, but I wasn't expecting that wave to come in like it did. All right, this is where I'm just going to start using that trolling motor to compensate for that uh, increase in wind and um, low speed on and off a little bit just to slow the drift down. All right, it looked a little bigger when I first saw it, just short, as, as close as it could come, but um, not quite 19. Okay, I'm riding up drift at full speed with the kayak motor, which is actually you know, 3.2 miles an hour or something with the current coming at me. Um, but what I'm doing here is just knocking the speed down on the motor so that I can uh, just use it to cut that wind component of the drift down, because it's, yeah, every drift it's a little bit more wind, so I'm trying to get that bow into it and, uh, and get a reasonable drift. Okay, trolling motor's on all the time now. Uh, when I get to the top of the drift, I just slow it down to about uh, roughly 25 to 30% and point it into those waves, and it's giving me a perfect drift. Okay, I'm just making one mistake at this point. I'm manually uh, controlling the drift. I should have used the autopilot, but this is the first time I'm using this kayak for fluke fishing. So, yeah, you know, live and learn. I'm going to figure it out by the end of this trip. But um, right now, I'm just using the arrow buttons on the remote and uh, tweaking the speed in there. And it's, it's doing what I need it to do. Alright, keeper number one in the boat. And uh, you may have seen me push a button on that remote while the fish was coming up. That's spot lock. I've anchored it. So now it's basically I'm not losing any, uh, any ground while I'm doing all this other stuff, which is, hey, I want to eat these guys. I've got a small canyon bag. I've um, got some ice packs in there. This isn't the greatest way in the world to bleed the fish. You know, it's so much easier on a boat where you've got a separate bucket and all. But you know what? This gets the job done. Uh, the fish dies faster and... Uh, you know, gets the blood out, preserves the meat, and, um, yep, yeah, well, one in the box. Okay, so obviously it's getting bad. Now, the thought process is, if I leave, I'm going to have a heck of a run uh, into this. And the wind is much higher than it's supposed to be, so I'm hoping that uh, well, first of all, I'm catching fish, so if I just keep catching fish, you know, maybe an hour or so, you know, the wind will drop down to where it's supposed to be, and I'll have an easier ride back. Um, the other issue is I still have some incoming current. If I wait, I'll get some current behind me, and, and that will help, um, although it won't help with the chop. Uh, but, yeah, for now, uh, oh, yeah, so now it's raining, and that makes it so much <laughs> worse. Uh, I've got a foul weather top on, and I just 
decided I'm going to stay at it. I'm catching, and uh, it's going to be an awful ride if I try to leave now. And I'm not really in any danger. And all the boats have left, so I've got the whole place to myself. Uh, and I'm going to stay at it. Okay, so the current is turned around to outgoing now. And uh, yeah, I see I've got water on the lens. It's going to get corrected. But, um, so this is actually a little bit better because when I go to set my drifts up, which are really trolls at this point, I'm going with the wind and the waves to the top of the drift, turning around, and now I'm trolling into it. So I'm running that motor um, at almost half speed to do this. And uh, but it's moving me along at that perfect like you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 miles an hour, staying down nice with the three quarter ounce. I'm making a perfect drift, and I'm using autopilot now. I figured that out. So with autopilot, I don't have to do any steering. Uh, the power head's doing everything it needs to do in order to stay in the right direction, and then I just finely tune the speed. But for the most part, I'm just letting the motor do its thing. Feels like one for the air fryer. So I switched bucktails. Uh, just too high a percentage were coming on that shrimp. And I just wanted to try. I've got this glow. Uh, so just this year, the uh, SNS John Skinner Fluke Bucktail, the swing hooks, came out with smaller ones. And this is a three quarter ounce. So it's really, it is the first time I'm using it over here. And yeah, it's going to work pretty well. And there's other new stuff in there as well. You know, that gulp shrimp, um, I don't think, I think that's a new color. That's not a big deal. But on the end of that bucktail is a four inch gulp grub and they didn't come out until early 2020. So that's a relatively um, new offering. And I gotta tell you, for years I used the four inch swimming mullets. I definitely like the four inch grub better. It holds up better. It's just got a, a better profile, um, a little more bite on the hooks that are used for these rigs. It's just definitely my preference now to use those four inch gulp grubs over the four inch swimming mullets. So here's a good example of how nicely that autopilot works. Just look at the power head of the trolling motor. It's constantly searching back and forth. Uh, yeah, you, you can't do that by hand. You know, I, I don't know, it looks like you know, once per second it's making an adjustment. Um, it knows uh, where I set it to where I want to go, and it will just keep compensating for the wind, the waves, everything else. Another fryer. And of course the trolling motor on a boat will, will do the same thing that this trolling motor is doing. Um, so I mentioned I'm using autopilot, but I am manually taking care of the speed. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to just have a set speed. I want to be able to feel that bucktail, look at the angle of the line, and get it exactly where I want it to be. But as it turns out, I don't have to adjust the speed very much. You know, maybe every 30 seconds or so I'll tweak it up or down. But uh, I'm pretty much hands-free here. And if I didn't want to tweak the speed by hand, I could just put it on cruise control. All right, three of the four keepers came on that glow bucktail, and I only used it for about a third of the trip, so uh, I'll be starting with that next time. I get to go home. Yeah, so the bag limit is four fish, so that's my limit. You saw me hit the spot lock again. I'm just going to keep the boat uh, stabilized here while I tidy up, and then I'm going to have quite a ride 
into this weather. And there were 22 shorts that went along with those keepers. Well, I wanted crappy weather. I got it. Uh, I got a lot more than I bargained for. Got my limit of fluke. I just need to get home alive and uh, I will. It'll be good. Okay, this kayak is wet. However, uh, it enabled me to do that fishing and I'm going to get back. There's no way I could paddle a couple of miles into this. Um, Pedal, maybe. I think with the Hobie, yeah, I, I probably could have done it. Boy, it would have been tough. But yeah, uh, <laughs> this this was some trip. Okay, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And check out my online fishing courses at saltstrong.com/skinner.